Is Lupitazu wrong? Have you been lied to all your life? Well, watch this video and find out. First, let me remind you what L'Hopital's rule says. Suppose you have two functions f and g that are differentiable on an open interval i, except possibly at the point you're evaluating your limit at, and suppose the derivative of the denominator is never zero, except again at the point a, and suppose that the limit of the derivatives exists, and equals to L, then the limit of the original fraction equals to L, which in layman's term is usually abbreviated as, as the limit x goes to A of f of x over g of x equals the limit as x goes to A of f prime of x over g prime of x. So if this limit exists, then the original limit exists. Now, I want to reassure you, L'Hopital's rule is not wrong. So what you've been doing so far is in fact correct. But what I do want to show you is that those assumptions are very important. There's a reason why the statement is so long. Because in particular, I want to show you that if one of those assumptions is omitted, then they're actually counterexamples to L'Hopital's rule. And let's start with this one first. So why is it important that the limit of the derivatives goes to some limit? Because for instance, consider the function f of x equals x plus sine of x and g of x equals x, but at a equals infinity, which is completely fine for L'Hopital's rule. Then notice the derivative of g is never zero, except possibly at zero, but that's far away from infinity. But now notice the following. Let's first of all calculate the limit as uh, x goes to infinity of f over g. So the limit as x goes to infinity of f over g that equals to the limit as x goes to infinity of x plus sine of x over x. And if you split it up as x over x and sine of x over x, that just equals to the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 plus sine of x over x. But this, by the squeeze theorem, goes to 0. And so in the end, the limit should be 1. However, what if we naively apply L'Hopital's rule? So what if we take the derivative of the top and the bottom? Then we get the following. So let's say we take the limit as x goes to infinity of f prime of x over g prime of x. That is the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 plus cosine of x over 1. And this limit doesn't exist. So certainly we cannot apply L'Hopital's rule to this because uh, the limit of the quotient exists, but the limit, of the, um, the limit of the quotient of derivatives doesn't exist. So that was the first counterexample and explains why we need this assumption. And now what I would like to do is to find a counterexample to the second assumption. All right, the second example is actually more interesting because consider f of x to be x plus sine times cosine and g of x to be f times e to the sine of x. And let's first of all show that f over g, uh, the limit doesn't exist. So consider limit x goes to infinity of f of x over g of x. Well, it's actually not too bad. That's limit x goes to infinity of x. So just f of x over f of x e to the sine of x. And this cancels out. And we're left with the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the minus sine of x. But this thing, it oscillates between, I think, e to the minus 1 and e to the 1. So this limit actually doesn't exist. 
and yet the ratio of the derivatives converges to something. So now let's just consider the limit as x goes to infinity of f prime over g prime. And this is a little bit more involved, but yet it's also super interesting. So this becomes the limit. So limit x goes to infinity of f prime of x over g prime of x. That is the limit as x goes to infinity of, all right? So this becomes 1 plus, again, Prada Lu, so cosine x times cosine x. And then plus uh, sine x times minus sine x, so minus sine times sine. So in other words, 1 plus cosine squared minus sine squared, just to make things easy. Squared. And then for the denominator, again you use the Prada loop, so this becomes the same derivative as the top, so 1 plus cosine squared minus sine squared, and then e to the sine, and then plus x plus uh, sine times cosine, and then uh, chen lu, so uh, cosine of x times e to the sine of x. But it turns out we can simplify the numerator a little bit, because 1 that's nothing else than cosine squared plus sine squared. So this becomes cosine squared plus sine squared plus cosine squared minus sine squared. And then the sine squares cancel out and you're left with two cosine squared. So this becomes limit as x goes to infinity of two cosine squared over, so again, same thing here, 2 cosine squared, e to the sine, and then plus, if you want, x plus sine cosine, okay, and then cosine times e to the sine. And I am a I'm leaving out the x's here, but let's go that limited blackboard space or whiteboard space. But then what you can do, and that's the cool thing, there is on the denominator the common factor of cosine and a common factor of e to the sine. So let's just factor that out and you're left with the limit as x goes to infinity of 2 cosine squared and then cosine e to the sine and then uh, 2 cosine plus uh, x plus sine cosine. And then there's a nice cancellation. So this cosine cancels out with this factor here. And in the end, you left with the following. So that becomes the limit as x goes to infinity. And now let me write down the x's. So 2 cosine x e to the minus sine of x, all right, and then over x plus 2 cosine of x uh, plus sine of x cosine x. Now here's the thing, what is happening, so this is the limit as x goes to infinity, the numerator is just some junk. But notice the junk just oscillates because cosine is between minus 1 and 1 and sine is between minus 1 and 1. So it's just oscillation junk. <laughs> Becoming very non-rigorous here. And then we have x plus also some oscillation junk. So what happens here? The numerator just oscillates between two numbers. This part oscillates between two numbers and x goes to infinity. So essentially what you have in the end, you have something oscillating over infinity, which gives you zero. So it's just junk over infinity that gives you zero. So you see this is really interesting. What have we found? We found that the limit as x goes to infinity 
of f of x over g of x doesn't exist, but the limit as x goes to infinity of f prime of x over g prime of x equals zero. So definitely do not use L'Hopital's rule here because um, if you did it, you would just say, oh, the limit is zero, but it isn't. And the question is, what went wrong? Well, what did we find for g prime? Well, g prime was just the following thing. So what did we find? So g prime was just, again, e to the sine of x times cosine of x times 2 cosine of x plus x plus sine of x cosine of x. So in factored form. Now, this is positive. And this, well, again, oscillation junk plus x. So if x is very large, this becomes positive. But then the problem is this thing is sometimes 0, precisely, again, at pi over 2 plus pi m. So in particular, the derivative, what it looks like, is it's 0 a bunch of times. And in particular, there's no interval, again, near infinity, at which the derivative is non-zero. It'll always be zero at some point, which, again, contradicts this assumption that we need that g prime is never zero. So hopefully this video shows you that there's a reason why theorems in math are long, because one can always find counterexamples to things. So therefore, I hope from now on you're a good citizen and you always check that the limit of derivatives exists, which is usually the case, and more importantly that the de denominator, the derivative is non-zero. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.